Welcome to Farm Chicks! My name is Debbie Bissoon and this is my sister, Becky Bissoon. And we are the Farm Chicks. We're going to be visiting farms across Jamaica, exploring the length and breadth of each farm and also featuring the farmers. We're going to be looking at livestock, ground produce and aqua farmers. But we also want to inspire our young people to choose farming as their first choice. Especially women. We yep. want to empower women so that they understand that, hey, farming is for you too and you can do it. Farm Chicks is brought to you by Volkswagen Jamaica, H&L Agro, and Digicel Foundation. Join us for Digicel Foundation Footprints, a monthly show that follows the work of the various foundations as they make a difference in the lives of communities across the Caribbean and the Pacific in their mission to create a world where no one gets left behind. We have to send off respect again. Thanks again, Digital Foundation. This week, we take on the journey to Springvale Farm in Bog Walk. Springvale Farms, they are supported by the Digital Foundation. And we went there to meet with Titania and... Mark. Yep. So this week we're planting cabbage and... Pumpkin. I love a cabbage. I love a cabbage. I, I love personally cabbage. love pumpkin. I love a cabbage. So chill. Me love cabbage. Go me love cabbage. Come. Okay, Tanya. <laughs> Hi. We made it. <laughs> We're going. We're good. Welcome. Woo. All right. Oh, hey, girl. Welcome to Springville Farm. Thank you. Hi. Thank you so much. Tanya, what a beautiful farm though. I'm telling you, um, and a lot of hard work as well, but we are really here to talk about the farm and Digicel and yes. really how the farm and Digicel work together with Youth Crime Watch to present what we have here. I love that. So let's talk about Springvale Farm first. We're in Bogwalk. Mm -hmm. Bogwalk is known for many, many things. We had to come over the flat bridge mm -hmm. to get here. And then there's also this very lush uh, orange patch that's all the way out there that is of course people know that true juice is from mm -hmm. it's from this side as mm -hmm. well but this particular community Springvale let's talk about it and then you know the farm being in the community like it's right here mm -hmm. well we are on two acres of land the farm itself is around 20 mm -hmm. but from the the river from around it's literally two acres of land so there's a river running through there here is a Spring. spring. Okay, actually, spring. a spring that runs through the which borders the, the actual two acre property. And so, on the property, we have cabbage, we have pumpkin, banana, planting, corn. If you want to make a good pot of soup, yes. you find everything on this farm. Don't make sip I hear it says soup, you must say sip. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we actually have some sip. Yes. preparing for you but before we get um, to all of that as I was telling you before it's two acres of land mm -hmm. um, what we're sit what we're looking at now is our demonstration plot which okay. means that the community is very much involved in what we plant here so um, the farmers are from the community the farmers are for are from the community they mm -hmm. also farm within the community nice nice so today we'll be looking at the cabbage and or pumpkin all right, well, let us go. You're going to be the one showing us everything or we have people to meet down there. You see, the technical, technical person, yes. the farm person is Mark. So Mark will be talking to you about all the from farm to table process. Ready. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. Child. I'm good. Mark, hello. We'll reach. Yeah, well, that's nice. Good to see you, yeah? How you do? Not bad enough. Bless it. Bless Hi, Mark. How you doing? Okay, tell us, Mark, tell us, Mark uh, is a real farming man, right? The expert. Okay. Don't show about that part of it. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we work as a team, and uh, everybody play their part. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. And they've said knowledge is power still, yeah? Yeah. So we're here to share. 
Yes. Well, because we want not only you but others to know and get the, the necessary information still. I love nice. that. So off the bat, as you walk down here, I'm looking at the beautiful patch of cabbage. Mm. And for many of us who just buy cabbage at the supermarket or you go buy it at the market, you don't mm -hmm. really and truly see how it looks from the ground, yeah. you know. So all right, so Ketanya, thank you so much. You're going to leave us with Mark? Yes. Because we want in to get into hands. it. And Mark, all right, thank you so much, Ket. So, so Mark. Mm -hmm. Them purple something here now. What yeah, are man, these? These are purple cabbage. You, know? oh. you, you have different varieties of cabbage, you know, and um, you have different species. So the thing is that uh, we are doing a mixture of the regular green cabbage compared to the purple cabbage, of which you know a lot of people kind of gravitate to the, the colorful mm -hmm. vegetables now. Yeah. You know, so we try to diversify in relation to the market and the market demand. Cabbage is so nice and versatile. Like it you can is. eat cabbage raw. You can eat it cooked. We even had it like a, a salad with yeah. a little bit of mango. Mango and banana. Mm. Big up to Stepa Chef. Chef, you don't know. Yeah. Chefa. But it was really, really good. Trust me. What I loved about Springvale is where it was located. It's inside the community of Springvale. Mm -hmm. And it serves the community. In fact, it serves as well the school that is in the community. And yep. we spoke to the principal about how beneficial it has been to have Springvale Farms located there. Springvale Farm, since their inception, they have contributed so much to Springvale Primary. We have partnered with them in so many ways. The Digicel Foundation, which is one of their sponsors, they have given us, even now with sanitization stations, masks, and other things that help us in our reopening process. We have also benefited from capacity building for parents in the person of Miss Ketanya Griffiths, she's always here, always here. She's just like a member of staff now, and we are so happy for her. We have formed partnerships in, recently we have given out over 50 care packages, and that is an initiative of the Springvale Farm in association with Grassroots Foundation and the Book Industry Association of Jamaica. Well, Mark, make you ready, because okay. I'm ready, Mark. You're going to have to walk us through the steps now of how to plant cabbage, because maybe somebody's watching, and maybe we can actually replicate Do this it in our home. backyard. Yeah. All right, but the thing is about it is that cabbage are normally come from they're from seeds. Okay. Oh. Very small seeds. So I'm not open seeds to show you those still. Seeds, right? But what we actually do is that we normally you can do two type of, of sowing. You either do rex sowing in the field. Yeah. Um, of which. We, it is good, but it is not good in all cases because when you remove these seedlings from the field itself, you damage the root the system. Root. Okay. And the, the, the regrowth is much longer. While we may use seed trees, where we may use a potting mix, use the trees, set them in the trees, and then when you're ready for transplanting, you just remove a cell mm. and plant it directly into the soil. And you have... Which we will show you. Yeah, because I notice you have a little greenhouse happening up yes. there as well. So that's yeah. supposed... You guys have the seedling for the cabbage? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that and is Ketana, where all so the we seedlings have come from. Yes, so Ketana, seeds. while Mark is showing us, you know, the process and mm -hmm. just walking us through the field, I want to get some seeds for us so that we can show the people what a cabbage How seed looks like. Mm. We don't see no seed that come from cabbage <laughs> normally. Yeah. So we need to okay, see what the seed look like. Yeah. All right, so let's walk through. Yeah, What kind of soil is this? This is more like loam. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you have different types of soil. You have sandy loam, clay loam, clay, sand, and loam itself. But Does this soil have more clay than...? I think it has a balance in relation to clay and loam itself. So what this does is allow for good drainage, yeah. but not too fast and not too slow. So the thing is that um, when you use a certain amount of water, it will be able to sustain in right, the, in the, the soil, moisture. Yeah, for, for a time. Okay. While if you have sun, it drains very fast. If it's clay, it, it comes Cools the moisture. Sun. Yeah. yeah. You don't want that. All right. So we're in a nicely prepared, uh, what do you call this now? A field? Yes. All right. Good. So do you use anything additional? Because ours is just what is available here on the ground. The thing is that um, we, this is natural. Okay. But what we normally do is that um, to enhance growth. 
we normally would add some fertilizer to the soil. Okay. So we may what use kind of either granule, either we use sulfate of ammonia, urea, because these are more for foliage mm -hmm. um, or greenage of the plant. Um, and then we'll do a side dressing when we're going to really mold the crop after. A side dressing? Side like dressing is like when you put a, a 122 22. What is that? Um, that's, that's, a, a that's a granular fertilizer also. Okay. Oh. Um, but you have different grades of fertilizer that can actually be used um, in relation to getting can the production. Can you use organic fertilizer? Yeah, man, that well? is the best thing, man. Because um, what we normally, you know, some people is more eater. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? So what, what we normally. like to eat, eat well. Yeah, man, nothing <laughs> wrong with that. But what we normally recommend is that if you actually want to use organic material, you try to get the ones that are broken down completely. So like they come what? like a powdery form. Um, like for chicken manure, it should be powdery. It shouldn't have a lot of clumps or it shouldn't be fresh. Which means I'm oh. going to dry it out. Yeah, man. But if it is too fresh, once you use it on the plant, it can burn the root of the plant. Oh, so we recommend, because of the acidity. Yeah, yeah. It is very high in, in urea. Captain, you have the cabbage. Yeah, man, Bring it, come now. Like, let's we'll show them how the, the process works. Oh, so this is the cabbage seed. The cabbage looks a little bit greener than the pop, pop chai. chai. Yeah, the leaves are far more hardier. If you look at it, if you look at the, if you look at it, it is far more hardier than David. Give me two. Give me another one. And you look at them. You look at the characteristics of the plants. The, the pop chai mm -hmm. is far more lighter in color mm -hmm. and you literally can see through the leaf while the cabbage is thicker, much, much thicker. Right? So that is how you can make differentiate between the pop chai and the cabbage. Oh. The seeds and the, the seeds of both plants are similar. Mm -hmm. They look the same way, the germination is the same way, the growth is the same way, but the pop chai goes up while the cabbage falls in. Oh, oh, so the pop chai goes up while this cabbage will fold, in. fold yeah. in. That will give us the big, nice, round um, shape. All on right, yeah. all right. So we're going to plant our own patch now, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So, so, so you have the seeds, Catania? Yeah, this yes, is purple cabbage. Okay. Yeah, so if you look at it. Each... So these are purple cabbage seeds. Yes. So the seed purple? No, the seeds are not purple. Well, yeah, they are a little purple. But if you. All the, the cabbage seeds have a similar color. So yeah. Um And if it is very hard to differentiate um, the variety until it actually starts to grow. Okay. That's all you can differentiate. When you go to Springvale, you cannot miss the beautiful little patch of cabbage. Like cabbage, as far as I can see, it's cabbage. Just green, fair green, beautiful. And Mark, he had all the information about cabbage. Mark, you are now considered to be the cabbage man. Cabbage person. Yeah, no cabbage. All the information about the cabbage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright, so Mark, we're ready. You have your tray ready. Yeah, man, yeah. These are the cabbage. Yes. Yeah. Yes, these are the seedlings. Seedlings. So the how cabbage. long would they take from, from the seeds to get to this point? Alright, um, Normally, the seeds would normally germinate between three to five days. Wow. And then you'll allow them to stay in the nursery for two weeks. So it is 14 days before that's they all? actually start to, before they reach the stage. 14 wow. days before they get to the, the stage? stage yeah. But that's that means That, that means yeah. you can plant cabbage at home then? Yeah. The, the thing about it is that cabbage is a three month crop. Um, so from actually germination of the seed to the foliage of the, 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 okay? the food, <laughs> yes. it is three months. Three right? months total? Totally. Yeah. Okay. Right. So um, the process is is that two weeks you go directly into the field, and then you have another um, ten weeks or more before, before we get a big to, ready cabbage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's plant. So I, I noticed that you have some purple cabbage in this row already. Yeah. Uh, we just had some pop choy being planted in this area. So why do you guys plant the pop choy in between the cabbage? All right. There's two main purposes for that. One. We use the pop chai to offset the expense of the main crop. The, the main crop is not pop chai, it is really cabbage. Okay. okay. So the pop chai is a six weeks crop. When you reap out the pop chai, you actually start to mold the cabbage. That is when the cabbage actually need molding, six weeks after planting directly into the field. Oh. So while reaping the pop chai, you reduce your labor cost 
because they're actually mold the cabbage while reefing. And the outside. process of molding is what exactly? Um, it's just removing soil from an area to another. To so the other area. Yeah. Perfect. All right, so I'm ready to plant it. How are we going to plant it? How many feet apart? All right, um, it depends on the size cabbage that you want. Because um, many inches. Thank you, you, Mr. Feet. <laughs> you, you, well, it depends on the size cabbage because um, if you want a larger cabbage, you'll plant it at a, at a wider space. Okay. Oh. Right? But um, on average, people would normally plant between nine to a, a foot, nine inches to a foot, to All 12 right. inches. Well, show okay. us because we're ready to plant this line of yes. cabbage. All right, what I'll actually do, we normally drop out first to the area. So oh. if you have more than one person planting, so you would drop it to the distance that you actually want to plant. So my question, all right. All right. You drop it to the distance that you actually want to plant. Come on, Becky, drop out something. That means the person who is actually going to plant now. Yes. Because it is best that you have two persons, one dropping out while the other planting. All right, so I'm going to be dropping out. Becky, you can plant. I can get a stick? Um, <laughs> no, we get the mash it. Uh, Miss Princess, hola. we get mash it. We're not really like young like we used to, you know, even though we name chicks. <laughs> Very important, when you take the seedlings from the tree, when you're going to actually plant, you don't plant no higher than where the medium is. So from, it, from the That's soil, the right there, yeah, so, so plant, no everything further. has to be submerged. Yeah, so you don't go no further or you don't put it anywhere up here. Okay. What will happen is that if you put it above here, you may have damping off taking place. That's a, a bacteria or a fungal problem. Okay. So when the water touches it, after a while, and you notice how the time is hot, mm -hmm. it will boil it, it will cook it. Oh. Right? Now the medium here holds a lot of water. So once you use the, the plant and you put on the water, mm -hmm. this will sustain the plant for a while. Hold it right here mm -hmm. and you don't go no further than there. And you plant. Put the soil around it and then you press on it a little to compact it. Okay. Okay? So let me see, let me see how you're going to plant now. Right. So you know, so we're going to save that cabbage especially for you now. Please. Please. Then we don't get no cabbage, because you never plant right, any cabbage. Plant any. Is no. that right? get no cabbage. We want to right? plant one cabbage to <laughs> come back. Right, see it? Cabbage. Very good. And as I said before, I thank my mother. We, we, we plant I in, in furrows and then you have a mound and we use the mound to plant the pop chai. Oh, so the pop chai will be planted in on the, the mound. On, on the mound, on the top of oh, the mound. on the top oh. of it here, And so? the cabbage in the furrow. We call it furrow. So what happens now is that once you, once you start to reap, you actually draw down. So that's, so how, you, that's how you say you mold it? Yes. Yeah, so when you reap this, you pull up. Oh. So it actually draw down the soil. So and that's the, every nutrient, yes. everything from the from pop choy yeah. would directly come Lumbar. to the... Yeah. So you maximize the land usage, you reduce your weed um, growth, and you also create an, an income from the crop. From the two crops? Yeah, so we create, we call it um, maximizing land usage to create an income for your main crop. Oh, mm. all right, let me plant this one mm. now, because Mark, what I want you to do for me, is to take us to where we can actually see a cabbage in its maturing phase. Okay. Yeah. So, but let me go and plant out this. We we'll soon come. Yeah, miss a spot. Where, I miss which spot? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. But you must bear in mind we have a border crop, the corn. Use the corn as border crop. What it does is the insects that would normally go directly to the field would go to the corn first and we do the pest control from there. You know, I grew in a space where you never really have 
farming taking place, you know, growing our space here called concrete jungle. And it make you learn, being hungry make you learn to appreciate food. And once we get involved in agriculture, now you really learn to appreciate not only the people who produce food, but the food itself, you know, and it just draw that level of passion and that love for it. So that is why I am in farming at this point. Coming up on Farm Chicks. We'll be right back. Farm Chicks is brought to you by Volkswagen Jamaica, H&L Agro and Digicel Foundation. Join us for Digicel Foundation Footprints, a monthly show that follows the work of the various foundations as they make a difference in the lives of communities across the Caribbean and the Pacific in their mission to create a world where no one gets left behind. Professor, no respect again. Thanks again, Digital Foundation. We need to go look at some material in cabbage, you know. All right, so we're going to go up at the top. All right, so Mark, let's go look at a cabbage that we have reaped and it's ready to eat. Mark! What a piece of cabbage look good. Come well, here with it, man. Well, I, mean, I tell you, boy, surprisingly, we never even know so it's mature enough. You know. Yeah? It's a good thing to come, man. But if I go nice. to our own to bring the maturity. This is so nice. nice. Yes. And it's heavy. Yeah, man. So about how many pounds of cabbage is we looking at? All right, we're talking about uh, two and a half to three pounds of cabbage. This though. is three pounds? Yeah, man. That I'm can feed that. a house a household. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. This Wait. is a big cabbage, though. Yeah, man. But guess what? It depends, as we telling you earlier the planting distance that we had used mm -hmm. so it will determine the size of the cabbage that we actually get out of the field. Nice. Oh okay yeah. so so all right so so Mark may have to ask you know so what are we going to do with this cabbage because as part of what we of what we do here Mark as you may know is that the farm chicks must eat from the farm. Booty. You know, so, you know so everything we never eat come from the farm. We're glad for that. Nice. Yeah man because we try to feed ourselves in such a way and yeah. uh, we produce whatever we normally consume on this farm. Sustainable agriculture yeah, at its best. Yeah. So we're going to be eating something from the cabbage today? Yes, man. Yes, man. And I hope you will eat many more after you don't taste that because there's going to be a high taste <laughs> still, yeah? Yeah, so we, we, we see the cabbage, Mark, and then, you know, we were told that we were going to be planting pumpkin as well. And we yeah. don't want to waste some more time, so yeah. let's go over to the pumpkin. Yeah, man, we have, yeah, man, we have a nice pumpkin field up at the top there, man. So we can... Up at the top? Yeah. We can like the higher it. heights? No, man, just see the heights there, man. It's not too <laughs> high, man. <laughs> All right, man, we go. All right. Fun facts about cabbage. So, cabbage is actually 70% of water. That's a lot of water. And it is rich in vitamin C. It is. It's like a really good way to get your vitamin C for yeah, your addition. Yeah, in addition to like your other fruits and so. Did you know that cabbage could cure a migraine headache? Yep, if you had cabbage, um, steamed that is. Or if drink. you put it on your forehead, it can help with a migraine. I'll go and yeah. try that one. Yeah. Becky, this feels familiar? Yep, remember my higher heights. But me not see where you are step. Ah! Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. Mark, we travel. This feel like medium heights, but That's we're like in a we're in a we're in a pumpkin field right now, and and I'm looking at a lot of pumpkin that is all over the place. 
So pumpkins, Mark, let's talk about pumpkins. How many varieties are there? Are there varieties of pumpkins? Well, the thing is that um, there are many different varieties, but it is very hard to identify these pumpkins now because of the whole intercropping and cross-pollination and things like that. And you know, we Jamaicans are very unique people. A man take some pumpkin seed and wrap it in some newspaper and plant it and then it come out the with pumpkin. what he wants, you know? Yeah. You know, so it, it have a, a very, I mean, diversification is so wide. But Bogles have developed a pumpkin name called Bogles Globe. Oh, that's um, a Yeah, man. Okay. Yeah, man, that's a very, it's a compact pumpkin. Um, very fleshy. Because I really like that pumpkin come in different shapes. Shapes and, and yeah, man, and nice. form and colour and, and things like that. And that all come down from generation to generation. The thing about it now with pumpkin is that you don't really have to do any whole of land preparation. You know, and um, there's a thing we have to understand is that pumpkin is used as a people call cover crop. That means when you have a lot of rain, what it actually does, it cover the soil itself and when the rain pattern come, it cushion the water from going directly onto the soil. It's just like when you, the rain touch the soil, it have a way to beat it and it'll cause it to erode. All right. Oh, yeah. There's you no. Can people can eat this? Yeah, my well, yes. I mean, especially for us men, you know, this is a very, very powerful substance, you know. Like, like, what does it do, Mark? Uh, well, I don't want to jump over the fence. <laughs> 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 um, a lot of people kind of get misled by the color of the the, the, the the pumpkin itself. Yeah. But when you actually reap a pumpkin, the leaf that is closest to the pumpkin itself. For example, this pumpkin here, a mature pumpkin. The leaf that is closest to a mature pumpkin, that leaf will dry down completely. Okay. So you'll find all the other leaves around it, green and luscious, but the leaf that is closest to it is dried down completely. Okay. So when you also knock the pumpkin, you're supposed to hear it has some you hear hollow. some little sound inside, but don't be misguided by the sound mm -hmm. that you're hearing or the color of the texture, the, the outer texture of the skin. Mm -hmm. It's just the, the leaves itself. Okay. Will give you an ideal indication that the, the, the pumpkin is mature. What I want to know now, Mark, all right, so, 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 so after I plant the seed, how long are you going to take to get to, we're going to get to start to see pumpkin coming out of the ground? Because I realize even with this one, can I lift it? Yes, man, but yeah, you can lift it. Oh, but it's gone down in the ground. Yeah, because it always, all we have these, you know, all these have root system. I realize that the roots. roots are happening. Yes. So have, this will produce another pumpkin. Yeah, man, this will continue bearing. It is currently flowering here. So that's going to here, be a pumpkin. And here. Oh. Right. But the thing about it now is that um, you don't really want your pumpkin vine to be running all over the place. Right. So what we actually do is that we call it, we call it budding, mm -hmm. where you may get a knife, you mash it, you cut here. And you so stop you it from, it in the bud pretty yeah. much. So you, you, cut Put the, them. you cut the growth. <laughs> and when, once you cut the growth, what will actually happen now is that it will send back all the nutrients into the food. Oh. So you may find a man with a massive pumpkin. It's because he nip it in the yeah, bud. Because he nip it in the bud. That's like good for nip things in sense. the bud. Yeah, man. Pack so early. Makes yeah. sense. We're going to nip back in our bud. <laughs> <laughs> Pumpkin yeah, man. Now. So remember, you need to plant at least three. three. I have three here. You see me now? Me the original pumpkin planter. You understand? Oh. And me plant pumpkin long time in my life. We could visibly see pumpkins growing wild, almost like a weed, uh, you know, but it's really pumpkin. And Mark, of course, Mark is a cabbage man, Mark is a pumpkin man, man Mark is like every Mark planting no man. Mark, no about farming. No about the planting business, mm -hmm. yeah. It is 
guys, welcome to the, the shade house. Um, this is where the process all started before we actually go into the field. And um, if you notice, we have seed trees, and we have potting mix, and then we have the vegetable matters coming from the trees themselves. Nice. You know? Okay, so you essentially all you do is just put the potting soil in the tree, and, and it's one seed per... Right. We call it cells. One cell. Yeah, so each seed go to an individual cell because what you want is just one plant okay. Okay. that you're actually planting in a space. Right? Um, if you have more than one seed thing coming from one cell, then you may have competition in relation to the nutrients that each plant will require. Okay. Oh. So this is this is all cabbage. All cabbage. This yeah. is cabbage. Yeah, yeah. yeah pop you over there. Yeah, man, Let have, me see it. Have, um, this is a pop chai. Nice. And if you look at the, as I said before, the uh, difference the, the in the leaves. leaves. Yes, yeah, so the, the pop chai. And the color is different. The pop chai goes up mm -hmm. while the cabbage falls, falls, falls in. in. Yes. Okay, all right. And, and, and remind me again, how long does it take to, to get to this level? Well, the, the, the pop chai. It's, they're fine, they're okay. Yeah, no the seedlings are hurt. No, man, they're good, man. <laughs> the pop chai is, um, the life of the pop chai is really six weeks. Okay. So two weeks after you actually plant. Yeah into the field, mm -hmm. um, within four weeks from that, you'll, you'll read. Okay, All okay, right? good. Yeah, fun facts, greenhouse versus shade house. We are going to the reality of the thing. The thing is this, people have a concept to say that shade house is the ideal place to plant vegetables and plant food. But the truth about it is that a shade house is only a space where you can really grow vegetable material for planting into the field while, a, sh while a, sh a, a, a greenhouse is more of a controlled environment where the temperature have to be regulated and all the seedlings and, and planting material is normally done on a timer so that the necessary water will be given in a specific time the nutrients that will be given will be done in a specific time and the regulation of the temperature is regulated to ensure that the plant reach the maximum production that it ought to reach while the shade house now is a different space, you set your seedlings in your seed trees, you put them in it, and make them stay in there for a little while until they're ready for transplant, and then you take them out and put them in your, in your field. And that's the, the difference with the two. All right, personally, the, the, the take of agriculture is that we just need people to really, really appreciate farmers. Um, farmers are, in my opinion, the heroes of this country. Um, and they say the, the war that fight the longest on earth is food war. You never stop a food war. So what I would want is that the government to put some more emphasis on getting some of these agriculture programs, I mean, really in place. Just like how the foundation, Digital Foundation, have reached out to a lot of farmers and farmers group, and they have played a major role in relation to agriculture development and sustainability. We want the same emphasis and passion to be placed through the different different government agencies to ensure that Jamaica can sustain and feed themselves. Because we can do that. We don't have to import nothing from foreign. We have a, the right climatic condition to produce all the food that is necessary through the entire year. We can plant any niche crop. If you talk about strawberry, kale, celery, parsley, cabbage, pumpkin, lettuce, Jamaica can produce it all year round. Yes, ladies, naturally from the farm, you know? Thank some pumpkin you. with some cabbage and everything else, you know? So, I'm going to the cabbage in a dish, yeah, but I think the cabbage over there, so. Yes, I'm going to go on now. Yes, I'm going to taste what is natural. Ooh. You know, no salt. Mm. This is the Ital farm. And guess what? The when soup is very yourself, creamy. You may have to go jump fence, you know? The so, jump fence? Yeah, man. So, Mark, what am I going to talk well, about oh, jump yeah, fence? So, man, Wait, what am I saying to me? Natural, say? man. Anything natural, man, will give you that vibe well, and vitality. Mark, thank you, know? you so much for having us. We learned a lot today about planting cabbage i'm planting pumpkin as well and now we are enjoying the fruits of our labor, labor. big up ah. to the chef yeah man you're most welcome man and um don't hesitate to come back again love the work that you're doing 
I would like how you put in some emphasis on agriculture, mm -hmm. you know, and I would like how you put in some, a lot of energy in relation to the youths and women in agriculture. I desire to see two nice daughters stepping on the farm, doing some serious work and educating the, the nation about agriculture. It's it's a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank you so much, Katana, and the for accommodating us. Definitely. The hospitality was on point and the food Jeez. bad. Yeah. Big up mm. Stepper Chef. <laughs> yeah, big up Stepper Chef. I step over here so we're going to eat something. Later, guys. <laughs> bye. <laughs> I asked Stepper for two cups because I forget one. No, you were just craving. That's, what, that's the problem. The soup tastes No, you are craving. You are craving. That's why I asked for two. Calabash full of... In Jamaica, once it's nice, I have to do it twice. Somebody did have to drink the soup two times. It was yummy. Nice. All in all, big up to the chef because everything that we got was from the farm, real from, from the farm to the table style. Mm -hmm. So we love that. And everything tastes nice. So big up to Mark. Big up to Katania and the whole team at Spring River for having us. It was superb. It was a great pleasure. vibe. Yeah, and we learned so much about cabbage and pumpkin. And until next time, we are the Farm Chicks! Farm Chicks is brought to you by Volkswagen Jamaica, H&L Agro and Digicel Foundation. Join us for Digicel Foundation Footprints. A monthly show that follows the work of the various foundations as they make a difference in the lives of communities across the Caribbean and the Pacific in their mission to create a world where no one gets left behind. Professor, no respect again. Thanks again, Digital Foundation.